Welcome to Ask Janet, where I share my guidance and my perspective from 20 plus years of leadership and human development study and experience. I'd like to give you a perspective that I received when I started out in my career working at a large publishing company. I would help craft the competencies or the skills that we would use to select people that would work for the company. And as we were going through, you know, these common competencies, which are, you know, interpersonal skills and all the types of things that you need to be a leader, one of the competencies and one of the skills that this company was really adamant about looking for, and they actually included it in the, the list of skills that they would interview for was, was called bias for action. And I, I remember thinking, what the heck is bias for action? You know, how is that a, a leadership competency? You know, what is that? Yeah. And bias for action was if you're put in a choice where you, where you have to either act or do nothing, that the person would have a bias to do, to, to act. They would do something. They would make a decision and move. And think about it for a minute. You're in an industry, right, um, that's moving. It's action oriented. The news. The news is coming at you in the moment. It's constantly coming. And so you can miss it <laughs> because if you don't have a bias for action, uh, the news comes and goes or somebody else will get the news first. And try to help people with when it comes to being stuck is this concept of bias for action. It's do or do not, right? So let me give you an example of somebody that I was working with and where this would play out. There was a woman who was dying to start a health and fitness blog. Okay, she had been researching health and fitness. She was passionate about health and fitness. She was, and she had a lot to say. She was a really great writer, but somehow didn't really know how to go about doing this. So she started doing research on the internet and watching other people's health and fitness blogs and, and you know, talked about it and talked about it and researched and researched and researched. Years later, when she and I spoke again, this is like five years after the first time we had, we were talking. And then when she, uh, she came forward and she said, you know, I'm still wanting to start that fitness blog and the health blog. But, and I, so I asked her, I said, so what's getting in your way to act? What's getting in your way to move to action on this? Why, why haven't you moved forward? And she said, well, you know, there's so many blogs out there and I don't think I really have a unique voice and, and, um, you know, I don't know where to start and I, you know, I've done the research, but you know, on and on and on. So there were all these different excuses of why she hadn't moved forward. This is where the concept of bias for action comes in. Bias for action is do something, anything to move that dream forward. Start writing the blog, uh, put it out there, right? She wasn't making any movement forward because here was the key. Bias for action requires a decision. And the decision is I'm either gonna do this or I'm not gonna do this. If there's one thing that I can give you as a, a piece of guidance to if you're stuck is make a decision have a bias for action and move forward. And even if you don't have the whole plan, even if you haven't planned it all out, stepping forward and making a decision to do something versus think about it will exponentially get you out of the place you're in. So any place you're in right now, if you, st you can stay there. And that's a decision too, right? But staying there without, move, without a bias for action is you just stay there. You just stay there. Keep moving forward. Make a decision and move. And always remember, every moment you have a choice of what you say, what you do, and how you make people feel. Choose wisely because those choices are who you become.